Ja. Please start, sir. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Meena Lok, coordinator of the program. Welcome you all. Dear professionals registered from more than 17 states of India, as well as from UAE and Bangladesh and Pakistan, I welcome you all again on the sixth day of this virtual international program for the librarians, which is focused on applications of tools and techniques which are required for today's librarianship. Friends, this is our sixth day and we have seen application of two major tools related to library and knowledge centers. First is Moodle. Another tool which we have seen, it was Zoom. And these tools were very well supplemented by the theoretical base of open access. Today is the sixth day, which is totally focused on research integrity and how to enhance your research skills. To conduct this session, today we have Mr. Jay Bhatt, an expert from Dexel University, USA. Along with us today, also we have Dr. Meeta Rathod, who is the coordinator of National LDP program, Manlibnet, with us. We also have entire Mukta team, MES IMCC team, plus our entire advisory body members of this program. I welcome all the members which are present, who are present with us in the meeting room with me. Now, as far as the entire schedule is concerned, today we are conducting this session in the evening. This program is organized by MES IMCC in collaboration with Mukta, Mumbai University and College Teachers Association. MES IMCC is a premier management institution, Institute of Management and Career Courses, which runs the focus programs MBA, MCA. Along with that, we also are interested in running the distance learning programs on our campus. We are having IGNU Study Center on the campus where more than 1,000 learners are pursuing variety of programs including MBA, BCA, entire tourism thread, BTS, MTTM, as well as we also run entire library science thread on the campus under IGNU like BLIS, MLIS and PGDLAN. Apart from that, we also have certificate level program in library science domain, CLIS. We also have the certificate level program CIT, CBS for the learners interested in pursuing other domains apart from their main activity. We also run autonomous programs on our campus, which includes one year postgraduate diploma in library networking automation and digitization, which is our focused automation program and uh, focusly qualified librarians are pursuing this program to enhance their technical skills. We also provide setnet training programs to the budding library professionals. And this program helps them to crack the set and net examination because in India, it is a mandatory uh, eligibility norm for the library professionals to have the set net qualification. Now, as far as Mukta is concerned, uh, let me uh, invite uh, Dr. Dr. Siddiqui. Siddiqui Dr. to please introduce Mukta. Over to Dr. Siddiqui, please. Thank you, madam. Am I audible? <coughs> Hello. Yep. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Greetings to all. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> welcome to all the participants for the webinar. Uh, 
Mukta, Mumbai University and College Teachers Association is registered association and is affiliated to Akhil Bharti Rashtriya Shikshak Mahasan, ABRSM. Rashtra ke hit mein shiksha, shiksha ke hit mein shikshak, shikshak ke hit mein samaj. This is the objective of Mukta. And as for the objective, since its inception, Mukta started taking keen interest in the teacher's well-being. A messy awareness drive was conducted throughout Mumbai University affiliated colleges under the leadership of Dr. Shrekhar Chandatre as president and Dr. Namdev Mange as general secretary. Now, under the dynamic leadership of Dr. Vaibhav Naravde as president and Professor Subhash Atole as general secretary, a lot of initiatives have been taken for teachers' training. Mukta established teachers' education cell and teachers' grievance cell and now launched a website which shall be very useful and informative for teachers' community. With the onset of pandemic, a lot of activities have been taken up um, by Mukta and uh, Mukta decided to hold a webinar for teachers' community at large. Since 4th April onwards, 12 webinars were conducted on innovative topics and overwhelming response from teachers all over India were received for these webinars. Representatives from as many as 107 universities and abroad and an average attendance of 2,000 plus was recorded. Mukta team then decided to help colleges by providing technical support and colleges responded to it. As an outcome, six colleges and the universities is organizing seminars in association with Mukta. Thank you. Back to Minul ma'am. Thank you, Siddiqui, sir. Now, uh, before uh, moving towards the actual session, uh, it's my real pleasure to introduce you today's session speaker, Mr. Jay Bhatt who is a Horatius learner. Mostly we use this Horatius term in our library science field with the reader, Horatius reader. But let me tell you, he is a real Horatius learner because he is having uh, three MS degrees in his pocket. Uh, Jay has done engineering from Walchan uh, Engineering College, Sangli. And uh, after that, he has completed MS in electrical and computer engineering from Drexel in 1986. He did his MS in education from University of Pennsylvania in 1997. He completed uh, his uh, MS in library and information science from Drexel University again in 1997. And uh, learning is, uh, his hobby. His first job was in the development research and analysis domain in Franklin, where he guided researchers in collecting information. Currently, he is the librarian engineering domain in Drexel University, Philadelphia at USA. Jay received Drexel University's Harold Mayer's Distinguished Service Award in 2003. In 2007, the prestigious IEEE honored Jay for outstanding dedication and leadership to the Drexel University IEEE Graduate Student Forum. He is an active member of Engineering Libraries Division, ELD, of the American Society of Engineering Education, ASEE. -E. He has chaired, co-chaired many sessions in various conferences in USA as well as in India. He loves mentoring students and uh, in his vision, learning is a fun. So that's why I said in my introduction that he is a Horatius learner. And uh, today he is going to conduct a um, session on embrace research integrity, avoid scientific 
misconduct and enhance scholarly research now this topic research basically it is very close to our heart because uh, in the latter part of our career we totally focus on the research actually we should focus on the research in the latter career of our research because many time it happens that after phd uh, many of them are saying our research activity has started after phd real research work many times also we heard that uh, we stop research after phd nobody is doing research after phd this this situation also we realize in few of the cases and few of the cases really they are focused on uh, the pure research work or applied research work so uh, many times we face so many hurdles in the research process so how to solve these hurdles how to overcome these hurdles and what exactly the um, we which techniques we have to use basically to enhance our research skills and what does the research scientific or research integrity what it means exactly so we will see from the horse's mouth today so over to you jay and welcome you once again uh, thank you minal uh, let me share my screen now so uh, so i hope everybody is able to see my screen yes yes we can see okay wonderful great so thank you minal thank you everybody i'm very happy to be here and thank you for your invitation for me to talk to you about this very important topic in today's world so my topic is embrace research integrity avoid scientific misconduct and enhance scholarly research because these are all uh, interconnected terms uh, and if, uh, when we go further in my presentation you are going to see why all these different terms that i'm introducing here are going to be critical to uh, 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 effective uh, uh, research so i'm currently engineering librarian at, uh, in the scholarly communications department here at drexel university in philadelphia um so um i'm going to start with two uh, uh, critically important terms um which are which should be so embedded uh in our everyday life that with, that is what it should be especially in today's virtual environment uh the authenticity and integrity is so critical uh, so what is authenticity um uh, what is academic integrity how they are both applied to teaching and learning and then we come back to research uh, that minal has very nice nicely stated in terms of how the research should be in our career and uh, it's playing a critical role in uh, f uh, contributing new information to our fields so whether it is experiments results data how are presenting data and publication so this is the basic introduction to the three terms um and uh, society of american archivists they have this uh, very important uh, dictionary called uh, dictionary of archives terminology uh in which they very nicely define authenticity which is a quality of being genuine not a counterfeit and free from tampering and it's typically inferred from internal and external evidence so uh, uh, quality of being genuine is so important in our daily lives as well so especially when in the today's world we have all these virtual media platforms and um, when we think about integrity and moral um characters we should ask ourselves whether uh, am i doing it right am i being genuine to myself am i being genuine to everybody uh, so that applies to social media as well uh, and of course we extend it further into teaching and research um and then we come to academic integrity uh the dictionary defines academic as something relating to schools this is what we are here today for um uh the making uh the best contribution in the field of education as effective teachers as effective scholars and effective researchers integrity uh, briefly explained earlier uh, adherence to moral and ethical principles soundness of moral character being honest that is what it is all about so now what happens in academics and uh, we are all our teachers we are all professors 
um, we want our students to grow. Um, so what we want to say is their own work, not copied, not plagiarized, um, not uh, studying at the last day before the exam and mugging um, or even sharing homeworks with each other. Uh, that's not what we want to see. We want original, authentic, genuine contribution from our students. So how does it happen and why is it so critical? Um, because the learning includes understanding concepts and we will, students should be able to share and explain their ideas if somebody asks to them. Uh, so that is if, if the students are simply mugging and copying, they're not understanding anything and when they're asked to share what they've learned, they will not be able to explain that. And that is not what we want. That is not the learning outcome we want. So when we ask them to write papers, um, it should be in their own words. Uh, cheating on tests is forbidden. Exams, uh, you cannot, we don't want them to cheat. We do not want them to reuse papers. And in today's world, if you go to internet, people can find a lot of papers and simply it's so easy to copy and paste. And that is why teaching moral aspects of education is so important. Uh, so right from childhood, when we have these concepts embedded within their uh, education system, um, as they grow up, they go to college and in their future career, they, uh, all those uh, qualities will remain in their hearts forever. Uh, same thing with original research and genuine data. We need to make sure that our research is original. We are presenting with the right data. We are not manipulating data and we are not fabricating data. So all of this I'm going to cover as we go move forward in the presentation. And especially in the libraries world, we all are familiar with uh, citing ideas, giving references, uh, um, words of others, so your professor knows where to go for more information. So anybody's reading your paper, they know where you get this information from, and if you want to follow up, you can move for forward. So um, uh, citing references and creating bibliography, they should be uh, taught right in the school, not just when they come to college. Even in school, high schools, in the middle school, in elementary school, we can form that basis where this information is coming from. When we see a post in WhatsApp, is it really authentic or is it manipulated? And, uh, and in the world of today's forwards and sharing um, uh, without thinking, it is creating so many problems uh, in lives. And that is applied to research as well. Uh, at Bexel University, we have the whole document and policy is right um, uh, on our website, which is called Academic Integrated Resources, Drexel University Student Affairs. Uh, and there's a link here. You can click on that link and it has all the details about policies. And, uh, uh, and I have captured two important things here. Um, Drexel University expects all members of its community to uphold the highest values of academic integrity. In upholding these values, the university is committed to investigating any allegation of violations of academic integrity against a student. And the violations include, but are not limited to, plagiarism, cheating, fabrication, and academic misconduct. And in my presentation today, I'm going to highlight how even in the professional world today, um, uh, the research uh, um, uh, data is fabricated and is presented and is published in uh, papers and then uh, later on it is found that this data is fabricated. Then what happens next? Uh, if you are caught in a fabrication, if you are caught in a plagiarism, if in your research paper is retracted, I'm going to explain that later on. What happens to your career, to your reputation, to your image, not only your image but your institution and your country as well. So th this is very critical. I think all of you and all of us must think about it um, when we try to publish our papers or, um, and we are also teaching. So make sure that our students value that. And a lot of times students might think among themselves that this teacher is very tough. Let's uh, um, let it be um, because we, at the bottom of our hearts, it is their benefit 
um uh, uh we have um uh, in our minds uh so so economic challenge um so it's uh, we we envision that learning is beyond textbook we just assign a textbook and the students follow the textbook it should it should not be that way it, we have to go beyond textbooks we have to go beyond lectures and that is where the library comes into play because uh we can encourage students to refer to different books available on a similar subject area so that they can refer to them use them use some of the material in their assignments and projects write a research paper with a synthesis of all collected information to um, make sure that we are uh, uh, giving a very strong support to their um, uh, topic or thesis whether it is positive, whether it is um, uh, uh, and they should be able to argue with their um, uh, points in the paper um, So, uh, and that can only happen if they are able to refer to all these different books. It could be online books or it could be print books. It doesn't matter, but they should be um, authenticated, real books and uh, information with a proper uh, um, credentials. So we want them to learn how to evaluate, how to rethink, how to synthesize uh, all this information, data, and concepts. and ultimately we want them to write their own paper and contribution honestly the satisfaction comes from uh, from a feeling that yes i did this work myself i uh, used a lot of different ideas and shared exchange ideas and learned a lot of different things and then i am able to present it by adding my own ideas and making it even more original so making something original uh is where the satisfaction comes from self esteem comes from so lot a lot of different um benefits uh, in our human growth happens because of that so the the and the question is we i um i'm not going to show you um how to create bibliography in this presentation but um just to point out that uh the paper um or whatever the references the students have used they must include them uh as a collections of sources that they have used in their work they must give credit to the source of information they use you must cite all types of sources um and the important part is do not list sources that you have not read and it happens quite often because uh um uh, uh, students might be using uh, even as a phd students or um, uh, advanced undergraduate students they might be using citation management software such as endnote or um zotero um uh, and in that what happens is that you are importing citations from different databases into one and you are searching for a keyword and you are pulling pulling up 30 40 50 uh, references and you might use only 5 or 10 of them and you uh, but you are citing maybe 30 or 40 of them uh, because you already have those citations without even and you have using them without even reading them so if you have not read you must not cite that source if you have not used any information on a source you should not cite it and the key principle here is when in doubt cite your source and i am um i'm adding this um point because scientific misconduct research conduct all happens with the basis of all of this i explained so plagiarism is also part of scientific misconduct and you are going to see those examples so uh, these are some of the reasons and the benefits of citing sources it also establishes credibility of your work acknowledge use of others ideas and clearly distinguish uh, them from your own um receive credit for what you have done um uh, you have done some work you, you have published a paper uh, when other people use that paper you want them to cite your own paper same way if you have used somebody else's paper you must give credit to that source of information place your ideas within the greater academic dialogue and allow the reader to find your source this is very important and in this today's global information world um researching information finding information is 
so global now that you can be able to find the research paper published from anywhere in the world uh, quickly through various discovery platforms. And using citation style correctly helps you avoid plagiarism. You can use any style as required. Um, uh, and depending upon the journal where you want to publish, they might have suggestion of a particular style. So whether it is APA or MLA style or IEEE style, depending upon where you want to publish your paper. Okay, so now uh, we come to our main point of research integrity and scientific misconduct with a basic um, understanding of what we have seen so far. Um, so what does research integrity include? Um, NIH website, which is National Institute of Health, uh, uh, has this very uh, important uh, website which highlights um, what research integrity includes. And I'm going to read some of these, uh, which are the shared values in scientific research. Uh, honesty, as I mentioned, convey information truthfully and honoring commitments, accuracy, report findings precisely and take care to avoid errors, make sure that you have done your experiments and you're finding results and you're reporting them accurately without any manipulation or without any mistakes. Efficiency, use resources wisely and avoid waste. And objectivity, let the facts speak for themselves and avoid improper bias. Let, this is an important phrase, let the facts speak for themselves. Um, you don't have to show off. If you have presented a fact, they said a fact, they are presented in the paper, that's about it. So now um, I'm reading how a scientific misconduct is defined at our Drexel's uh, policies of conducting research. Uh, so scientific misconduct is defined as fabrication, falsification, plagiarism, all other practices that seriously deviate from tests that are commonly accepted within the scientific community for proposing, conducting, and reporting research. Remember, by uh, uh, believing and contributing to scientific authenticity, we are actually uh, contributing to the benefit of the society. And that is what is important in all of us. Our research should be able to help um, our uh, uh, society grow, develop, move forward. Right, uh, so uh, again, this is the link where you can be able to find more details about this. Uh, so let us see how science, scientific misconduct is reported in literature. It's important to know uh, that even after all these uh, years, um, there are growing incidences of data fabrication, plagiarism, and scientific misconduct. And you can find a lot of evidence by searching um, in different discovery platforms. I, I'm sure you all use Google Scholar um, and some other databases depending, depending upon your institutions where you subscribe. Um, and if you just type scientific misconduct, um, uh, you should be able to pull up some articles there. Uh, and giving a couple of examples here, uh, we have access to Web of Science here in Texas University Libraries. So I'm going to use example of Web of Science and then also Google Scholar. So here's a screenshot uh, from the Web of Science database. And I search for research integrity and scientific uh, misconduct. So you can see it's right here. This is uh, my search term. And you will, I'm, here's the screenshot for just a couple of citations that I found. So scientific misconduct, a major threat for medical research that was published in May 2020, just this month, right? And then this is another article which came up in accountability in research and policy and quality assurance. And that was also published in April 2020, uh, this year. So just recent articles, um, recently published, and I sorted by date. So the most recent paper came up on the top. These are just the two examples. And here is um, uh, the abstract from the first paper, Scientific Misconduct, a Major Threat for Medical Research. 
And again, the abstract itself defines scientific misconduct as fabrication, falsification, and plagiarism are detrimental research practices, uh, selective reporting of data, inappropriate citation practice, ghost writing are admittedly respected by two percent, uh, admitted respectively by two percent, thirty percent, or thirty-three percent of researchers. So this is mm, a situation that was presented just this month in this particular article. Now I go to our Summon Discovery platform. So if you go to our library homepage, library.drexel.edu, you will see a search box, which is our discovery platform. It is called Summon at the moment. And you can just type any research keywords that you want. And, it, um, and then uh, you can uh, filter um, by different uh, ways uh, your research. So I search for scientific misconduct and research integrity here. And on the left, um, I filtered by only I wanted full text papers. I wanted scholarly peer reviews papers, peer review, and I only wanted journal articles. I could find book chapters, magazine articles, and so on. But I really only wanted how this particular topic is published in scientific literature. And again, I found a couple of papers, uh, cit citing two papers here. Maintaining academic, academic integrity, and this is a paper, paper published in Journal of Minimally Invasive Gynecology um, is a full text paper. I can use a full paper here. Misconduct in clinical research. So in clinical research, how misconduct was, misconduct was presented in this paper, done. And uh, uh, another one, the quest for clarity in research integrity, a conceptual schema. And that is published in a very important, prominent journal called Science and Engineering Ethics in 2019. Um, uh, and that is an original research. Again, you can go and explore the whole paper to get how uh, this particular uh, topic is uh, 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 presented in this paper. And this is an editorial article, uh, Maintaining Academic Integrity and Preventing uh, Scientific Misconduct in Clinical Research. Um, in the Journal of Minimally Invasive Gynecology, the citation that I found, it's an editorial. Uh, uh, but you can actually see the research misconduct is defined as uh, that uh, as falsification fabrication. We read that, uh, um, and then they also talk about uh, where, whether an article is retracted. So now they introduce a term called retraction, um, and now uh, we are going to talk about what retraction is and how it happens. So um, uh, a lot of times uh, researchers publish a paper, they may have uh, done uh, falsification, fabrication of data. They presented it in a paper. Uh, the reviewers have um, gone through it, but somehow they missed catching those misfabrication and uh, the, mm, they accept the paper and get published. Uh, uh, researchers may have, the authors may have even plagiarized some of the things and data and presented it in the paper. After some time, the original author finds out that this data was used from their paper and they complain to the editors. There's a lot of investigation happens. And if it is proved that indeed that was the case, then a collective decision is made and the paper is retracted, meaning that the paper is withdrawn from that journal. It is not literally withdrawn from the paper journal, but uh, there's a um, um, uh, in the title field, uh, it is added something like retracted, and there's an explanation is given why the paper is retracted. So now I'm going to cover how to find those retracted papers. Um, uh, and I'm mentioning these citations because this is, even in the editorial, there are five references made here. So um, make sure that we uh, develop a habit of using the right references. And if you are using the sources, we must uh, include those references. So why retraction happens? As I briefly explained before, after the article was published, evidence of misconduct, plagiarism, data fabrication, and manipulation was found after the investigation based on the complaint. Results in formal withdrawal of this paper 
this particular website here has published several articles on scientific misconduct and its direct consequences of uh, retraction happens, you know, loss of credibility happens, uh, loss of jobs, your reputation is tarnished, a lot of disadvantages. Just think about it. If my paper is retracted and if shows up as retracted in a database, all over the all the world is going to know me that I have retract my paper was retracted because of my um, unethical behavior. Uh, is anyone in the whole world going to collaborate me further? The chances are less. My reputation has gone bad. The institution for which I'm working is gone. Their reputation is gone bad. So there are a lot of um, uh, consequences of this. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, our article retraction guidelines. Committee on Publication Ethics has on this is the website and they have these important guidelines given. Journal editors should consider retracting a publication if they have clear evidence that the findings are unreliable, either as a result of misconduct. The findings have previously been published elsewhere without proper cross-referencing. It considers plagiarism and it reports unethical research. There are some examples. Please refer to the whole website for more additional details. Um, and um, there are clear-cut guidelines in number of public by number of publishers. Uh, you cannot submit an uh, abstract or a paper if the same paper you have been I mean also have submitted somewhere else. That is, uh, these are some guidelines that you have to clearly follow. And this is article retraction um, policies that LCL has. Uh, so again, you might want to refer to that. What happens? The article is retracted. Um, you uh, a retraction note titled retraction, and you will see the title of the article signed by the author and the our, our editor is published, and I'm going to show you some examples how that show up in elsewhere later on. Um, uh, so these are some guidelines and some, uh, their policies on article retraction. In um, uh, two years back, um, Retraction Watch launched a database of uh, uh, retracted papers, and this is the link where that article came up. At that time, there were more than 18,000 papers and conference materials that had been retracted since the 1970s. And a lot of those papers were coming from international uh, uh, publications and papers as well. Um, so uh, it, uh, the blog, Retraction Watch, tracks problematic scientific literature and they released this online database of more than 18,000 papers, conference materials that have been retracted. Uh, so you might want to go and explore this database. Um, and the journal Science, uh, which is a very reputed journal, they collaborated with Retraction Watch. Everybody probably should know about science. Um, uh, and then uh, uh, what was the conclusion is that although the number of retraction papers year, year has risen in this decade, that might reflect more policing of science. And there's a whole detailed um, paper later on. And this is the retraction database um, uh, link, retractiondatabase.org. And I am curious, uh, so I just use the term fabrication here. So I wanted to find out how many of those papers were retracted because of some kind of fabrication. So then uh, this is a screenshot of a couple of my citations that I found. So you can see the titles here. Uh, the subject areas, the name of the journal, the publishers, uh, tissue engineering part A, this is the publisher from where this article was retracted. Journal of Pharmacological Sciences from elsewhere, um, and why this uh, article was retracted and the names of the authors who, whose articles was retracted. So it has falsification, fabrication of image, manipulation of images, publishing ban, so all those uh, uh, reasons why these articles were retracted. And there's more detailed about this particular article, why it was retracted. This article has been retracted at the request of the authors. 
in figure 1c some of the numbers of the original raw data were changed hence the figures were different from real figures obtained from original raw data and the significant difference in figure 1c was opt uh, not obtained now this last paragraph is important um, for the for personal uh, implications so th these investigators tried to reach these authors uh, in which uh, whatever the email address that they mentioned but this message could not be delivered another author never responded to request for a comment now just think about it imagine that instead of their names your name was there what will be the impact on your own image and your reputation and the tremendous this uh, uh damage you are going to do to yourself another article scientist reproduction watch uh this is this came out last year genetics article reflected at higher rate than any other disciplines a study estimates that 0.15% of genetics articles are retracted most commonly for duplication and plagiarism and there are many other uh, uh, such um, articles you can find here at the scientist.com website so now how do we find retracted papers um, um, as teachers uh, we want to teach our uh, students also and get them familiar with retraction. They are also going to write research papers at some point. So we want to give examples as we create our curriculum. So what we can do is you can go to Google Scholar or Science Direct or any databases that you have subscription to, and you can use keywords like this, article retracted, notice of retraction, retracted, any of those keyword examples um, you can use. Uh, and these examples are given from this particular uh, library guide from Florida Atlantic University Libraries, a Guide to Science Information Resources. What is a retraction? You might want to find this website. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, website that you might want to see. And Drexel Libraries also has a lot of library guides uh, uh, related to uh, citation styles, uh, open access, open educational resources, and so on. Um, so here is Google Scholar. Now I'm starting with Google Scholar as an example, and I just type uh, retracted retracted article as my keyword, and then it pulls up uh, articles uh, like this. You will see retracted article right in the front, and it gives you um, uh, why this particular article uh, was retracted. Energy at Environmental Science Accepted man a Manuscript was published in error and has been retracted by the publisher. Royal Society of Chemistry. Publisher regrets that an administrative error led to a duplicate version of manuscript being published. You cannot have the duplicate version. So it's one example here. Um, and then uh, um, I went to BMC Evolutionary Biology site uh, which is the first one, I think, uh, retracted, uh, retracted article, uh, powerful graphical analysis, uh, this paper. Uh, so I wanted to see why this was retracted. So I went to their website and indeed there's a retraction notice for the same article was also published, uh, BMC evaluation by in 2015. So it looks like the article was published in 2004, but it was retracted after probably 10 years, it looks like to me, 10 or 11 years. So it it may have implication later on. So it, you know, after 10 years and again, uh, it could happen. And why was it retracted? The editors of BAMC Evolution Biology retract this article due to the decision by the corresponding author to change the license to the software described in the article. The software is no longer available to all scientists wishing to use it in certain territories. This breaches the journal's editorial policy on software ability. All of a sudden, the software is now not available, um, and that's why they um, you know, retracted this article. So make sure to follow the policies of the journal um, 
that where you want to publish your paper. Now I'm going to Science Direct, um, which is Elsevier's database. And there's an advanced search here. Uh, so you want to go to advanced search. If you just simply search in Science Direct, retracted article, you may not find relevant papers. You want, there's a specific way to search. You go to advanced search, and here in the title field, I can type retracted or any of the keywords that I previously mentioned. But you want to go in the other field here. Actually, this should be other because this is where I selected. So I want to search for retracted articles in other field because this is how they're categorized. And when I do that, now I'm feeling, I'm seeing almost 2,500 results for retracted in Science Direct. And you will see that even this article was in open access, it was retracted. And there are many such articles from open access platform are being retracted. So be careful in one in terms of open access publications. When you talk about open access, make sure that those open access publishers are also reliable. Uh, and there's a lot of discussions that is happening on that. So I suggest that the next session, um, you, um, you might want to think about integrating retraction within open access publications. Uh, this is very important because open access movement is spearheading fast all over the world. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we want to make sure these open access publications are also uh, uh, ethically published. Um, and this is another retracted uh, paper. There are many of them, but I'm giving you a couple of examples here. So if I click on the title, now I get uh, more details with this information. This article has been retracted and there's a elsewhere policy here. Um, and why was it retracted? Uh, because something was submitted by one author without the knowledge or approval of the other authors and the authors do not agree with the contents. This is really bad collaboration. You are three or four authors working together one author submits something without the knowledge of others, then it is found out and other authors do not agree about the first author. And that is uh, that is not acceptable. Uh, so this article got retracted. Another example here, again from Science Direct. Um, the article duplicates significant part of a paper that had already appeared in Bioresource Technology Journal in February 2020. So this is quite new, actually. One of the conditions of submissions of a paper for publication is that authors declare explicitly that the paper has not been previously published and is not under consideration for publication elsewhere. Reuse of any data should be appropriately cited. As such, this article represents a misuse of the scientific publishing system the scientific community takes a very strong view in this matter and apologies are afforded to readers of the journal article, journal that this was not detected during the submission process. So peer review process has to be also critical um, and something gets missed um, and the paper gets retracted and I already talked to you about the consequences. And finally, another example uh, and this is uh, uh, is about paper uh, not reproducible experimentally. Again, the data was fabricated, so somebody tried to uh, reproduce that experiment. They couldn't do it because of the errors or the misfabrication or falsification of data. Um, uh, and then they provide the reasons. Uh, the chemical composition analysis of materials selected in the experiment was wrong resulting in inaccurate data. And because of this mistake, the experimental test points in table two are not accurate. So wrong results and findings were represented. They were later found and the article got retracted. Now this is a scientific uh, paper, but even in the live information science field, we do all the cons uh, experiments and you, we do statistical analysis and we might um, uh, have errors in reporting data and paper could get retracted even in that area. 
so um uh, 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 you need, need to be very careful when you submit your paper uh, okay another example uh this was um be uh, because of an error involving the data set which doubled the reported sample size and that is a serious problem uh and the uh, complete analysis was uh invalidated authors reported this error immediately upon discovering the problem the authors regret the error for uh, in this case authors themselves are reporting the error error it is not that somebody else found the authors themselves found the error and they immediately reported and this is a very good example of um in a way these authors were ethical in their uh, uh reporting that they submitted uh, their mistakes so even though the article got published in a good uh, reputed journal like journal of surgical research uh by elsewhere that article got uh, retracted and this is how it will look like in an original journal article we all, each page of that paper will say retracted 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 and imagine you you are the authors and your paper is coming up like that uh, what will be the implications for your image for your reputation could be a job loss so many other things could happen so uh, i want to highlight some final thoughts you must appreciate and respect your research projects and when you respect you believe in integrity and you believe in honest reporting zero tolerance to scientific misconduct and commit to research integrity ask question explore questionable results before making any conclusions so, so when you uh analyze your data and you find some questionable results you should ask yourself are this results accurate and do some more analysis some more research some more uh uh conclusions before you um uh publish it verify your and review your papers where you are listed as one of the authors this very very important and educate students to rigorous training provide mechanism for your students in class to learn about this learn about scientific misconduct research integrity integrity and plagiarism so that they are not become they do not be, become victims of it nor they um, tarnish the image of your institution teach responsible conduct of research in courses contribute to quality efficient and ethical research and this is my contact information my email my li- uh, website and that is where you can be able to explore a lot of different library guides in different subject areas there's a whole library guide on library information science there also in uh, i'm in engineering so i have all the engineering uh, guides there uh, on publication and careers and lot of other guides are there so uh, thank you so much again for inviting me for the presentation today i hope you had found this talk very useful and the dialogue must continue uh, interaction must continue we have a, as teachers we have social responsibility for uh, education and we'll have to make sure that we do that responsibly thank you very very much thank you thank you so much jay Uh, really it was a deep dive in the topic as far as the scientific misconduct and the uh, paper retraction is concerned i think so the, this is the first time we uh, we are going through the uh, details of that uh, topic and what exactly happens when the process of retraction is uh, mm, there and uh, which type of uh, scientific misconduct we have to face and what type of actions are there you elaborated it uh, uh, very uh, in a very illustrative form and uh, actually uh, 
at the end really you focused in a very well manner that what we have to do exactly to avoid such things i think uh, this is a take away of your session that first of all uh, we have we should start thinking on our own in a pure yeah. way so that you can write on your way so there should not be any uh, fear in your mind what will be the report of plagiarism software and uh, what we have to do because if you start thinking originally if you uh, rethink the same idea if you are doing but if you are rethinking restating in another way so that can be the i, I think that will be the only right solution to uh, the research community i think right and uh, i also wanted to mention that uh, we use a software called turnitin i maybe right. you might be using yeah using we are that, also yeah that uh, is to catch uh, all the plagiarism from right. students projects right and many times it happens even for the research scholars pursuing their phd's 3 uh, to 4 times we have to do the plac check by by yeah. using turnitin even they are not sure uh, many times uh, for the institutional profile they are uh, copying the entire data from the website as it is and even uh, plagiarism issues are there with the um, literature review chapters many times we have seen that also so uh, we have to guide them to rewrite the content in their own terms in their own words so uh, and and we also try to make sure the students not use wikipedia as a reference right. they may use it as a starting point but they should continue and rely more on the scientific literature published in journals right right so uh, this is very important guideline that do not use wikipedia language as it is you can uh, just go through but in your own words through the original encyclopedias and um, dictionaries and directories you have to uh, take away the references this is a very good uh, i think guideline for the research particularly for the pg students jay um, because many times we observe in case of these students they are not uh, focused on writing on their own and catching the deadlines they are doing such things and at the time of viva it becomes a um, game of 5 to 10 minutes so uh, i think this is very much important for the pg level so if we imbibe such habits at pg level then there will not be any problem at the research level right and uh, one question i would like to raise uh, madam madam before starting question what sir yeah. will you please close the screen yes yes Hello. Uh, very much yeah let me stop this uh, sharing yes yeah okay uh, before moving towards the question let me announce please because the candidate uh, our uh, candidates are asking about opening the feedback link so please be there after completing the qa we will open the feedback link please please uh, please follow the uh, feedback link after completing the qa and after completing the session this is a very interesting session because and uh, it is our wish that you should attend the qa focusly and then we will get the feedback from you thank you so much so um, shall i move yeah, yeah. okay so uh, you mention about the uh, scientific misconduct and even the inappropriate citations and uh, if somebody reported the sample in a double size it can be the example of that so uh, is there any chance for them next chance for them to improve the same paper or like that yeah that is always there they can okay. definitely improve uh, they can uh... but make sure that they are uh, uh, presenting something original findings uh, not the same okay ha that is the key right so th that's the uh, that, that's what is important whatever you are going to write it must be pure it must be original and it must be in your own language exactly these are the three important uh, aspects i think and that is why i'm looking at the trend i'm looking at and my experiences uh, in the past Uh, uh i think we need to make a really really um uh, uh deep reflections uh, in ourselves uh in terms of uh designing a curriculum in which 
is focused on critical thinking and its application uh, so that we don't give a chance to students to just simply copy and paste yes. and they cannot even copy and paste if we are assigning problems and examples they are copying from we have seen that uh, and even there uh, when i was a student i used to see that um, uh, sometimes the papers uh, or somehow one student got a paper and then it was shared among everybody else and students were meeting at night uh, and uh, copying and, and, and so next the same paper comes it had happened i hope it is not happening now uh, and it should not happen it should not so it is happening it is happening now also uh, let me tell you uh, that uh, because uh, there is no check for example there are books coming out with isbn number hmm. which are mm -hmm. which are copied 80% 90% uh from the author itself uh, from the foreign authors itself again there is no check at the conference level also like whatever papers are submitted there is no plagiarism test uh, is been done and uh, if at all it happens then again the certificate is obtained only from uh, the author of that uh, paper and so there is always uh, a likely thing that uh, the plagiarism has uh, happened and there is no proper check because i have come across so many such books where isbn number is there uh, and uh, th there was a case also and uh, it was reported that 80% copying has been done but then afterwards there was no action because uh, uh, even uh, the book was of uh, rutledge publication and uh, they say that uh, if the book is available in market then only we can uh, proceed for the action so in such cases uh what exactly needs to be done to you know take it to the logical end yeah it's a serious problem mm. even uh, you said ja rightly ki uh, the program which you plan about on critical thinking i think it is uh, very very uh, precious because even uh, we observe uh, the majority of the candidates in india they are not able to crack these set net exams because whenever the questions ask on logical thinking they are not able to think because many right. times our students are uh, just mugging up the things and write down the answers but they are not able to think logically so this uh, critical thinking is very very important which helps them in the uh, actual research work and to chase and uh, complete the uh, accomplishment of the goal in research is a very different angle and i am going to add one more term here and that is uh, called active learning which is a very important right. phrase happening in the field uh, in the sense that you create learning environments both informal and formal in such a way there is uh, that uh, active engaged learning uh, happens uh, so if you are talking about plagiarism mm. uh, scientific misconduct to so create an assignment or exercise in such a way the students work in teams and in group right mm. but they are not copying or plagiarizing each other but they are giving feedback to each other mm. and uh, they do peer review of their uh, peers work oh. so they have, uh, they learn how to honestly critic uh, 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 from their own group mm. ultimately the quality of the project improves especially right. this is the age of team work and collaboration especially in scientific area mm. so it, it must be a conducive research environment so right so we need to also teach how to work in teams uh, mm. as students how to collaborate mm. team work into this interdisciplinary research right. so we have psychologists working with engineers and biomedical engineers to come up with systems um so uh, this is very important uh, one more thing um, you mentioned reliable open access publication so will you please li uh, highlight uh, related I, to i'll tell you why this happened uh, because um sometime back some of our phd students were bombarded with emails from a publisher that will make your thesis open and will do this and will do that um uh, I, and uh and it is not allowed uh, uh in that sense because our thesis has to be first published through uh, the valid platforms uh, uh and then uh, there was another example where 
a uh, lot of uh, uh, advertisement about a uh, open access publisher was happening but then they were all predatory uh, that we found they were all pre pre predatory articles uh, and uh, they were reported in also in open access journal so we have to be very careful i'm not saying that all open access are like that uh, uh, open access is critical uh, we need to support that movement but at the same time we need to make sure that it is reliable and ethical publisher uh, publishing many times impact factors are not mentioned correctly wrong impact right. factors even the international bodies and their peer review procedures are questionable uh, and a lot of time what is advertised is not uh, right uh, mm, Uh, marketing parts uh, is too much uh, to uh, they were the, they were not accurate statements and another thing is i would like to know uh, uh, many times these open access journals they are taking charges for uh, publishing the papers and all and they are mentioning for uh, maintaining that open access uh, um, uh, decor it is required for them to uh, take the charges so Uh, is it reliable or it is, is it questionable? In uh, author publisher, uh, yeah, it depends upon the who the publisher is. You have to look at the publisher's reputation, right? Uh, their papers and uh, other papers, and some um, are hybrid open access. So some of the journals, if the authors and the university is paying for the article, that article only comes as open access, but mm. not the other papers with the same journal. So uh, there are a lot of other ways of. Uh, open access dr mohantesh would like yeah. to ask something dr mohantesh yeah. yeah jai good evening good evening yeah i want a clarification uh, like web of science and the scopus they have the impact factor uh, procedure like uh, thomson reuters is uh, assigning impact factors for the journals published in the scopus and web of science uh, many databases but uh, what about the open access journals uh, which are published and how they are rated in the impact factors well again um uh, they uh, as per yeah. their website uh, they are only selecting the reputed open access journals in their data so they are not open access journals are included in their analysis um uh, and i know that they have uh, a thorough mechanism of peer review and selecting the right journals um No, but if they find something um, wrong, they might be able to even pull out that paper. It does happen sometimes. Okay, that's it. thank you. Uh, again, it all depends upon the citations. So if the articles are getting cited, then the impact uh, uh, factor will change also. Okay, the procedure is same as well as for the uh, right. uh, prior publishers uh, and, and open access. Uh, right, and Web of Science does have open uh, uh, open access channels in there. Okay, thank you. I have a question. I have a question. Yeah, sir. Uh, yeah. One I clarification I want in this matter: JCR, that is Journal Citation Report, gives impact factor of scientific journals mm -hmm. which are published. But is there any source like this for the open access journals? that is what the uh, current trend is um so they want to increase the uh, open access journal count so that the citations are increased the reputation goes up and as a way to reassure the value of open access the only thing is um so many of those journals published by other publishers have been so cited um Uh, well enough and um, so they are top ranking journals so the authors and the researchers want to publish on those journals which are already have reputation uh, and some of the journals have so much reputation that uh, especially in the scientific field um, the um, researchers want to publish in their papers because there are other issues like tenures uh, tenureship and promotion consent because many times what we are looking at we are observing is that many open access journals they are giving impact factor 5 6 like anything but in fact uh, actual printing journals very qualitative journals they have a impact factor not more than 2 3 4 exactly exactly uh, this and is the is situation why, yeah and that is why you just don't rely yes. on their website uh, yeah uh, 
don't go by the face value of what they are saying. Ah, yes, yes. You yes. must go to Web of Science, a quality mm. uh, analytics tool, yeah. and compare. Okay. Yeah. And if you um, say the name of the professor, uh, the authors, do more research about that author uh, on uh, see how they are represented, where they are published. Is there a connection between? Uh, yes. And you can do that. Uh, it's uh, his, his important contribution important. in that field. We have to look into. Right. So okay. that's why the honest reporting yeah. is becoming so critical every day. Yes, yes, yes. Doctor yes. Mitul wants to ask. Yeah. Nice presentation, Dr. Zawahat. I'm from Bangladesh. Thank Can you, you listen to me? Yes, yes. Mm. Uh, actually, I missed your presentation the first part uh, because I was in another webinar in my mm. country. So earlier, I think uh, last time you presented Google uh, using Google or something that I had passed very mm -hmm. clearly. And it, it was very learning for me. At the same time, it is also. But my question to you, that is the work is either uh, 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 I mean plagiarized or detracted. It is very difficult to sort out when researchers just paraphrase the words. Okay, just again I am repeating this sentence. The work is either plagiarized or retracted. It is very difficult to sort out when researchers just paraphrase the words. When just my question is, we hate even the theme duplication. Is there any software yet which can identify the duplicated theme as well? Do you think like that? I don't think so. Uh, I am not aware of any such software that. Would, but you got uh, my point. That. You got my I point, got, mm. I, I'm just I'm just giving you an thing, example. Uh, there are themes on um, uh, now. If you talk, if you think about scientific misconduct as a theme, right? Yeah. On that theme, so many presentations are done already. Yeah, yeah. All in a different way. Yeah. I probably presented in a different way, mm -hmm. uh, which is unique in that sense. So mm -hmm. I cannot say that uh, nobody can say that I copied my presentation or somewhere else. It's a theme. Right. But, but what we are looking at is how original my presentation was within that. Uh, theme. Yeah, but you know, our uh, researcher, I mean, our PhD in field researcher are so much smart because they are, what is happening, what is happening, they can paraphrase it very clearly. Even in such a way, they are making it paraphr paraphrased. Right, right. But that, that is why uh, the experiment is so important. The, exp uh, the experiment is going to add new findings, and that is what we are looking at, especially but the Joy, I think uh, every uh, science journal they have their own detracted policy. Do you think that it is also have in uh, social science or arts journals detracted policy? Yes. Elsewhere policy, elsewhere also. Elsewhere elsewhere policy, I have seen. And policy, that yes. policy is the same for all. And you might, you should look at each journal's policy. Sometimes journal may have its own policy, or yeah. publisher may have its own policy. Uh, so I mean, that's why. It, it's very important for students also to look at those policies before right. they submit a paper. And as an advisor, uh, it is also their responsibility to make sure that their students are reporting the right data. Mm. One, one, one thing you. I want to get. Thank you, Jagat. Thanks. To get. You're Thanks for my uh, Hello. Hi. Yes, yes. I'm hello. Hello. Hi, hi, Jay. Uh, I yeah. want to just uh, clarify, means nothing more important into this. If uh, you have so many examples from the scientific area and they are uh, means uh, rejected or retracted, <laughs> then what will be the condition of social sciences in humanity? <laughs> even in those uh, areas, no. also the articles are. Uh, yes. yes, 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, they are. Say, that. I am very surprised when I see. Means I am also from the same field. I uh, retrieved databases and uh, I noticed this thing. But it is uh, surprising that Elsevier and all these things, uh, such type of articles they are reporting. It's really good examples you have cited into this. Yes, and these are from the top journals also. Yeah, top. yeah, yeah. Very top. I and surgical yeah. and all. Medicine Even, and, uh, I don't know whether you're familiar with IEEE. IEEE yeah, also has yeah, yeah. articles. Yes. All yes, those definitely. different, uh, all publishers yeah. have 
to do that because uh, this is becoming a serious issue and it is becoming more global and a uh, lot more papers are coming out of uh, our countries uh, and our awareness has to in, uh, uh, increase and that is why our teachers uh, our researchers uh, we have a big big responsibility for that and that is why i am saying that if the students are not happy with you let them be not happy we have to be very strict question okay i think uh, if we have completed the question now I, and it's really uh, an interactive session uh, jay uh so now before you. going towards the uh, formal uh, vote of thanks let me invite uh, dr meeta rathod to please give her uh, concluding remarks dr meeta please over to you yeah hello hello jay good morning hello, to Mita. you good, good. Uh, thank you <laughs> and, uh, good morning to I, you and kemcho kemcho majama i can see some gujarati books in your bookshelves behind uh, you no so yeah I yeah I, yeah so i have my uh, collections of book i love books so this is my space for reading and everything i yes, yeah yes and i can see some of the gujarati books and said in that is right right so, yeah. okay so and i have organized also my books by subject so all um, spiritual books in one place all fiction books in one place okay mm -hmm. of different languages but in one place i think right right yeah so good evening to the panelists and uh, participants of this uh, session so on behalf of organizing team uh, let, let me thank you very much mr jay bhat for the excellent presentation on embrace research integrating avoid scientific misconduct and enhance scholarly research see what i have uh, understood from your presentation like uh, you are, uh, you you have focused very well on the retraction uh, policy and you know, articles how the articles are being retracted and uh, one example which you cited that after 10 years you know, also mm. the article had been retracted so i will i would also like to give you one example like it was in one of the uh, vice chancellor of uh, i don't want to name any university or anything in gujarat but uh, so his uh, his phd thesis had been plagiarized and it was uh, it came to light after 20 years of your his phd <laughs> and he had to leave his um, seat like you no know, he was removed from the vice chancellor position that issue had become so big in that time this is i'm talking about so he he had plagiarized or somebody plagiarized his oh no he had plagiarized oh okay so this is something around 10 15 years back you know this incident mm. had happened so this is very dangerous you know the students should uh, even everyone all the professionals should uh, remember this like we should not uh, uh, misconduct or plagiarize anything into this yeah and uh, you uh, some of the statements which i like very much like uh, like the real satisfaction comes when you make something really original right. and that's really true and one of the important thing is uh, like we should cite all the uh, sources but do not cite sources that we have not read uh, read right. no so fabrication should not be uh, should be avoided like and we should uh, follow the co yeah what you are going to say something uh, yeah what i was going to say was uh, like uh, we have satyam ev jayate yeah. is yeah. our yeah. deep philosophical uh, thinking yes yes coming yes. going with 100, 100 so yes and huh. we we got to start our teaching with satyam ev jayate so that the word truth is highlighted yes. all the time yes yes truth and, always uh, wins truth, uh, wins. truth always wins you know and the codes of uh, research integrity like honesty accuracy efficiency and objectivity these are very important norms and which we should follow and every uh, university should have their own research policy statement the way you have cited about the drexel university i think it is a need of the day right and uh, Uh, you rightly said like you know the like zero tolerance should be there for the scientific misconduct and it is very important like you know you should not tolerate such thing and finally like being a teacher we should educate our students first we should uh, uh, imbibe this uh, ethics morals into ourselves and then we should teach our students we should educate them through the rigorous training 
so in the future they do not uh, fall into this prey of you know of misconducting and then the, uh, giving bad names to themselves and the institute so excellent excellent what i like to you, the way you explained about the retracting thing you know this is the first time we are hearing about the, in elaborately about the retracting things so now the people must have come to know that like it is not easy to plagiarize anything you know you get uh, caught any time and initially in the olden days it was difficult because it was only in print yes yes now with the online uh, wow. environment it mm. becomes more easy for uh, mm. to catch one, all one, those one thing i want to uh, add uh, shall i yeah, sure yeah. sure please yeah uh, i'm a researcher research guide also teaching mm. pg student i always make one statement uh, in front of my student you can make foolish to whole world but you cannot make foolish to yourself so exactly. be honest with yourself mm -hmm. that always every year up in every class uh, i used to make this statement very nice that's what uh, i want to add <laughs> exactly i think this is very important learning for all of us that we should do that as well so thank you so much uh, dr meeta rathor first of all for accepting our invitation for giving the concluding demands my pleasure to always <laughs> listen to jay that's good to see to you collaborate with, yeah that was, collaborate with imcc that was our intention only so that you can uh, meet him online yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it is always pleasure to collaborate with meenal and imcc and now we've got a, a Uh, connected with the mukta also you know so i and actually i remember mukta now also. i remember that i saw minal at one of the conferences in uh, shimla uh in uh, um ettlis conference it's in um, uh, or not in shimla i triple conference yeah 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 that was uh, several years ago yeah <laughs> that was a uh, i triple e conference uh, paper was there i triple e you were there yeah, right. paper was yeah yeah it yeah. was a i triple e conference at bennett university at bennett yeah nice talk and uh, since or uh, mit mit we are associated with each other from sevania side right. so thank you so much uh, mr j for accepting our invitation and uh, uh, delivering this uh, speech on I, uh, very crucial yeah correct uh, minal i think it was jp university yeah jp university yeah jp university noida noida right right so uh, thank you so much i'm really thrilled to be here so i'm uh, i got really uh, inner satisfaction that i got a chance to uh, be with teachers from mumbai uh, and this is a great cause being uh, growing up in mumbai and being with the all this is majority feeling. of they are mumbaians in the and of course, room so that uh, because I, my native uh, place yeah. pune i have been there for all the time <laughs> so uh, uh, we thank uh, mukta people uh, for this wonderful collaboration and uh, it's uh, entirely a good work last uh, this is the sixth day uh, tomorrow will be the last day of this uh, program and it didn't click also when the uh, when we have completed six days and tomorrow we'll see the last day of the program it's really a, a wonderful journey for all of us and uh, thank you so much jay thank you so much entire advisory team and thank you imcc team my uh, director entire management body for supporting all the time thank you so much hope to see you soon again you soon and yes. i'm really uh, pleased to see all these different activities yeah. happening there thank you all the participants and for tomorrow we will meet at 10:30 in the morning instead of uh, 11:30 so please remember one hour early we are going to meet at 10:30 uh, the session will be conducted by dr akhtar parvez on documentation policies after that there will be a panel discussion from 11:30 onwards so please be there tomorrow we, uh, will be the last day thank you so much thank you all so it is 10:30 okay. am your time right 10:30 am right it will be like to, <laughs> yes to mid 2 am my time
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could, but I don't yeah. know. Say. Even uh, I'll send you the link for uh, you can utilize yeah. at least for the panel discussion, na. No? Right. Okay. In, okay. Right. okay. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye. Now I open the feedback link.